subscribe, do all that, you know what time it is. It's Netflix time. This documentary is called Misha and the Wolves. Just came out, it's an hour and a half long. Spoiler alert, let's just get it. So we got this radio host here that was about to tell Misha's story. She actually told it over the radio. Got a next door neighbor by the name of Pat. Anyway, we have Misha herself. Now Misha tells this story about when she was seven years old, she was a Holocaust survivor. She was going through the grounds of Belgium and now lives in Massachusetts now. She said she never knew her real parents, how they died or anything. So they go to this temple and her husband actually gets her to tell a story. The story that she's never told before. And here with this lead by the name of Jane who found the story so inspiring that she wanted to publish it. Alright, so basically it goes like this. Her real name was Monique DeWall, but she goes by Misha D. I can't pronounce her last name, don't ask me to. Now it's been said over the years in concentration camps, when they pretty much have a dead child or somebody that's no longer with them, they sometimes change their names. They sometimes give those names to another living child. Because she couldn't find her parents, two foster parents end up picking her up. They had claimed to be farmers or something like that. Very Dutch sounding names. So apparently she was told as a child that her real parents got deported to Germany. So at seven years old, she traveled through the wilderness all so she could find her parents. Through the cold, just trying to find food she could eat all throughout the wilderness. She said every camp that she passed by on the way was nothing but devastation. Just dead bodies lying around. It was a horrible sight. Then throughout all this, she seen a wolf, and instead of it eating her, it was actually going the same direction she was going. She had recently stole some food from some camp and was giving the food to the wolf. I guess she was able to bond with wolves now, right? Now, they didn't give us anything else after the story, but that's the most they told us so far. And of course, Jane was ready to publish this book. She had a small company, but she still wanted to get it popping. Then we talked to this wolf expert by the name of Johnny, or Joni, however you want to pronounce it. Anyway, she takes care of wolves on a daily basis and gives them their food and all that. But we'll get back to her in a minute. So apparently, when Misha was walking, the wolf was helping her and she got saved by a pack of wolves. Then after a while, she was convinced by Jane to finally write her story out. She wasn't really too fond of telling her story. She was kind of scared to at first because she didn't trust people, but reluctantly, she decided to do it. Her story came out, Jane published it, and it was all over the place. It got to the point even Disney Productions wanted her story. Hell, back in 97, even Oprah Winfrey wanted her to come on the show. Now back at the Wolf Hollow where Joni worked at, she tells the story about how Misha came there and then Oprah Winfrey decided to show up there. Now they had a lead wolf there that nobody goes in to feed, they feed over the top. But Misha walks right in there with the wolves. So in one situation, the wolf decided to climb on her back, reach his head up, reaches his jaws to bite her head, and she doesn't even move, she's not even scared. The wolf comes back down and befriends Misha. Jane, Oprah, even Johnny are sitting there like, what the fuck just happened? That shit is just crazy. Talking about she felt no fear. This girl gangsta as shit, right? And these are the actual pictures back then of Misha and Oprah. That shit's crazy. Crazy. So she's a fond lover of animals, you know, cats and all that stuff. And you're thinking to yourself, who is she, Dr. Doolittle? So for some reason, Misha didn't want to go on Oprah because she didn't have a pet sitter or something like that. Jane's like, come on, this is a, a move of a lifetime, you know what I'm saying? You could do it with your Oprah, you're about to be a million, million bookseller. It got to the point where Misha just didn't trust Jane for some reason. Then we find out a year goes by after the book comes out as a million book, books bestseller. We find out Misha's suing Jane because she said Jane was hide, hiding money and royalties and all that stuff. And then we have Ramona, that's Misha's lawyer. And she's basically the one that took Jane to court for real. They weren't selling nothing out of court. Court, they have it in court. And Misha got all the sympathies of the court. Being a Holocaust survivor, the jury basically thought Jane was taking advantage of Misha. Jane confessed to certain things that she shouldn't have, which made how much she had to pay back that much higher. This lawyer was able to get Misha a settlement of $22.5 million. Needless to say, Jane's career is about to go down the tubes. She had to sell her company. She was selling all types of shit. She's devastated, pissed off, and honestly wants revenge. But what can she do? She ended up doing a post on her blog trying to figure out what the heck went wrong. She was in her lawyer's office going through old records and documents. She opened a one file and it had Misha's bank account and it was in Misha's writing. Then all of a sudden she sees a document with her date and birth, where she originally lived, and her mother's maiden name on it. Because her date of birth was back in 1937. So wait a minute, the entire story is her talking about her looking for her parents that she never found, but her, her bank record shows her birth certificate of her mom's real name. So Jane's thinking to herself, Misha really knows who she is. She knows where she comes from. She's thinking to herself, Misha might be full of shit. But that's not enough proof for She goes to this lady that she knows by the name of Sharon. So she looks up a bunch of pictures that might be real and might be photoshopped. Now she had books sold in every part of the world in 20 different languages. And I guess certain books happen to have different pictures of her. She's convinced this one poly photo makes her look like she's four instead of seven. Then she looked at the father and took it in. Now, apparently, he's supposed to be a farmer, right? He's got manicured hands, though. Hmm. With a certain type of ring on his finger. So she's thinking to herself, this looks kind of sketchy. Then they look at the mom with a picture of a dog, right? Apparently, he's supposed to be a farm dog. Does that look like a farm dog to you? But the big thing that really got to him is her last name is supposed to be DeWall, right? Now, as I've said before, people in the Holocaust, it's common to give another name to a child if the name belongs to a dead child. But none of those names included the last name of Val. That's what Sharon discovered in the French novel version of the book. So something definitely seems off about this shit, right? Even with that, they still don't have enough proof to let her know that she's lying. So Jane did some digging and she decided to contact somebody who really lived where Misha used to live at. This lady by the name of Evelyn, a real Holocaust survivor. She went to a backstory about her parents, but she didn't know exactly where they are. Until one day she went by an abandoned concentration camp. The gas chamber and everything was burnt to ashes. And she found out that her parents, grandparents, cousins, 
uncles, aunts, nephews, all of them were there. Man, it's just sad. So she's gonna help Jane determine get to the bottom of this mystery. So she went to the Royal Library to find out about the name changes. She went to the phone books. The name Valve was not in the phone books when it came to Dwell's about 400 different names. Then we get to the story about this French lady who basically at the time accommodated Misha everywhere she went. Helped out with touring for uh, monitoring the kids, giving motivational speeches. She basically treated Misha like family. But now back to the investigation. Now Evelyn's heading into the war missions archive now if you wanted to find a child back then it was four separate books that they wrote different information on if you were able to get all four books together you would be able to find the child that you were looking for an exact location and all that because you know back then there was a lot of places they could hide their children and they had to otherwise not to grab them up and just straight kill them so she was going through all the books that she was able to find all four books i'm guessing this area was specifically for belgium and all the books she put together it did not have the name misha in it or her name monique de wall Almost stating that she is not a Holocaust survivor or not in a Holocaust. Because you're thinking to yourself, that's enough proof, right? Well, not quite. So they were trying to think to herself, was she a Jewish hidden child? Or they looked through her parents' background and found out she might be a Catholic hidden child. Or just Catholic, period. So they go through every last church trying to look for the archives. And then there's one church where it could have had definitive proof, but the church was burnt down. So at this point, Jane's thinking to herself, man, we're probably fucked. Turns out the offices about the church's records still preserved everything in the uh safe and in that book she found the official transcript of her real mother's name so monique's father's name really was the wall her real parents were named robert and esther so Mon monique monique Duval was her real name it wasn't a name given to her by foster parents or nazis or anything like that those are her the, her legit name so now they got definitive proof that misha's been lying like shit the entire time but then Sharon told him it might not still be enough because it is possible that the Dewalls could have taken in a hidden child and revamped the name. So they had one more shot. Go to the school that she used to go to. Find records of her name in there. And sure enough, they go to her old school. Evelyn goes to the registry and finds her name in the registry. So basically the birth certificate, her parents, and the attendance at school. You put all that together, it makes it official. Misha's lying like shit because Misha was going to a Catholic school. The Nazis were not killing Catholics, they were killing Jews at the time. Yeah, you've been lying the whole time. And while she was doing this interview, she's not even at her house. It was all staged. It's a staged background, fake props. Even in the interview, she was being phony. Making everybody feel sympathy for her, some old bullshit. Misha or Monique or whatever the hell your name is, you told this phony story for cash, you disrespected real Holocaust survivors, and you used the people's sympathy to sell millions of books. Bottom line, you ain't shit. Crazy thing is, around 2007, they made a movie based off of her life. A movie off of Misha's fake life. It was called Survival with Wolves, as Jane put it. Doing press all over the place for this shit. At the time, I think she was actually in France doing this. Man, Jane couldn't wait to get this information out. Before you knew it, every TV station across the world was blasting her ass. About as fake as this damn set she was sitting on. People like Joni felt disrespected and betrayed. Next door neighbors pissed off. Patty actually gave her money at one point because she's had to foreclose on her house. She ended up getting her like anywhere between twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, sympathizing off the fact that she was a Holocaust survivor. Misha out here just taking advantage of people. Susie thinking to herself like, "Bitch, I done brought you to my home. I got all this shit for you. I got everything pop publicized and prophesized for you." You know, she's just feeling all types of disrespected. Then it's not even the crazy part. We get this uh, story from this journalist, right, who was doing some digging and investigation on her dad. And actually had an interview with Misha's grandma at the time. She was like, "Man, this girl likes to live in her own head. It's all bullshit." Then she tells the story about Robert. Now, Robert during the war, he was part of the resistance, but he was never really a fighter. He was somebody that held the weapons. Now, he did get caught and got deported to Germany, but he ended up being a fucking traitor because he took down 41 of his other comrades with him. He basically ratted him out so he wouldn't get punished. Ever be known as a traitor to his own country. And Misha wanted to tell her own story because she was always known as the traitor's daughter. All the names of his comrades are the people that died or on this wall. His name was on the list, but they later erased that shit. No respect for traitors, not in here, not in this country. So basically Misha is portrayed as a liar, coming up with her own stories in her head because of real trauma that happened with her father. And most of the stuff that happened with her father is true. She just forgot to, you know, she left out the traitor part. But she still lives in Boston with her husband. But the people there don't fuck with her no more. They, they leave her all the way alone. Because they don't trust her. And they shouldn't. Especially Pat for giving her like twenty five to $30,000 to stay in her fucking house. Then we get back to the radio host that was duped by Misha's story. They were all fooled. They were all conned. Then we had this one lady that Jane talked to. And Jane actually wanted her to help out the story to pick it up. But she said, nah, she don't believe that shit right from the get-go. She ain't believe it back then. And she's right now. Then to further throw in some bullshit, they showed this interview where she talks about how she stopped a raping when she was a kid. And she ended up slicing the guy like three or four times. These are one of the stories that she told in her book. I mean, who are we to say she's lying, but after this shit, do you believe her? So Evelyn, thank you very much for exposing that Misha bullshit. Now that 22.5 million that Jane happens to owe, that notion got partially overturned. It never explained how much or what the deal was. What the hell's partially overturned? The bitch lied about the whole damn story. That's just insane when you can go to those insane levels just to make a quick buck. Praying on people's lives about people that really died in the Holocaust. It's fucked up. And me should just chill and live in a
Boston like nothing happened. It's crazy. Me and the Wolves on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, subscribe, do all that. You're on the top of this. These are the easy best stuff. Subscribe. Oh, man. Because you got that slogan.